right. So angels are known as celestial beings, or should I say spiritual beings. And um, traditionally, they are believed <laughs> to act as messengers, guides, guardians, or um, protectors, right? And um, these guys um, are also depicted with wings, <laughs> you know, and halos, right? In most um, religious or cultural texts. Um, and also artwork and literature, which if we have time, we'll talk about. But, you know, they have all these different um, depictions, yeah? And we can't really prove it, and but we could, right? It's kind of that kind of thing that we are still trying to, uh, you know, find the pieces and put them together because they are also said to live in um, uh, different realms, right? Uh, beyond the physical realms. Right. So joining us today is our smart guest, Vix, who is going to demystify these guys, okay, the angels. And she's also going to touch on the goddesses because when you look at their role or what these angels are depicted to be, you find that the role of the gods or the goddesses tends to overlap you know, with um, with their role, at least in my perspective, okay? That's how I see it when I read different texts, religious texts, you know, whatever, right? So, Vix, uh, the new age hipster, is joining us today to help us demystify the angels and goddesses among us. Welcome to Sisterhood Smarts, Vix, how are you? Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm good, I'm good. I'm hoping that we can demystify thousands of years of, of mystery in this call, to, this call today. <laughs> we're going Maybe, to a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing our best and guess what? No one yes. has all the answers. If you did, y'all, the world would be looking a little bit different. So don't front, okay? Now, now, Vix, I think let's start right from the beginning. And, you know, you can feel free to talk about both the angels and the goddesses because I really believe, and I say believe because I don't know for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. I really believe that their roles, you know, when you talk about messengers, guides, guardians, everything that is associated with um, these guys, women, men, angels, we don't know, mix, 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 yeah, kind of overlaps with the goddess. Right. So can you just start us from the beginning? Who are these guys? Who are these angels and who are these goddesses? And what are the yeah. answers? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think ultimately, you know, no one really knows. <laughs> this will be a short, this will be a short episode. Um, no, no one really, no one really knows. But I think the the general kind of feeling with the angels, the archangels, the gods, the goddesses, the the saints. Um, although the saints are a little bit different because a lot of them had a lifetime here on earth. But for those beings that we call on whether you know we call on the angels guides ascended masters goddesses whoever we're kind of calling on and like you said they're essentially these these messengers that are they are divine but they're like little aspects of the divine like personalities of god like these little parts of of god sometimes um you know when we when we want to ask for something when we need something from source god the divine you know your your choice your word of choice it can be a little bit too much sometimes to just say well i'm going to open to divine love and divine guidance and it can just lead me on my way but when we can tune into one of these like personalities one of these beings we kind of have this really clear connection to the aspects of source the aspects that we need whether it's that we want to invoke and embody those aspects for ourselves um, for example 
uh, if you're feeling nervous in a situation and you feel like you need some confidence, you know, there are beings that you can call on specifically who would be really good in that situation rather than just saying, hey, God, give me confidence. You can say, oh, I'm going to call on the energy of, of Sekhmet, the goddess Sekhmet, or I'm going to call on Archangel Michael to give me the courage that I need in this situation. And then we can kind of visualize that they're there with us, that we are becoming them, that we're a little bit more like them. So ultimately for me, that's how I like to look at these, these beings that they're like facets of the of the divine light you know these little um you know if you think of the divine light as like a diamond they're the little facets of of the divine that we can kind of hook into and connect with and it can be so much easier for us on this human plane to say okay i'm going to connect with a goddess or an angel who kind of maybe looks like me who kind of looks like a friend or somebody down the street who I can kind of, you know, visualize is, is with me and have a conversation with them in that way, rather than, you know, the booming voice of God kind of coming down and, and giving us our next assignment. So that's how, that's how I like to, to kind of define what they are. And of course, everybody's got a different, a different way of seeing, seeing these beings. So that's how I like to think of them as little, little aspects of, of source aspects of the divine. <laughs> I like your perspective. And I also like that you mentioned, you can also just choose to, you know, see it as the neighbor down the street, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't always have to be this, you know, thing that you cannot relate to in the physical realm. Can you talk a little bit about this? Because I think sometimes people prefer you know, what is in the book, somebody with wings and all this stuff, and they mm -hmm. miss the angels around us because I personally see different, the way people show up in the world as angels. It's so clear to mm -hmm. see it. You know, when you walk around and you see somebody doing something so beautiful, those are what, you know, the, that's why I started by saying the qualities of the angels. You know, these qualities, when you know what they are, you see them every day. But people who do these amazing, incredible things don't get the credit because they're not seen as the angels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, talk a little bit about this because, you know, I think it's important for us to start seeing that, you know, it's not always, it's okay to look up, in, out, out, but sometimes just look, you know, at your neighbor or, you know, your, 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 your friend or your sibling you know talk about this a little bit yeah yeah i think we've all got mm. i think we've all got those stories haven't we where somebody has appeared in your life at a, at a certain moment and has been like an like an angel in your life or or like you said um you know you see somebody who's doing amazing things and doing amazing charity work or just having a huge impact on the world and they're just so so positive and kind and it's just like oh my gosh they are working with something <laughs> like some energy that is so much higher than you know what it, what most of us are, are able to to access whether they're aware of that or or not um and you know one thing i've seen in my work that's really interesting is the amount of people that come to me for reading and i do these readings where i kind of look into people's soul aspects and i look at their life purpose and i look at you know kind of who they are on a on a higher level and the amount of times that i'm doing a reading and then i'm suddenly overwhelmed with this feeling that you know this person has like angelic energy and that they're from the angelic realms and that they're just here on the earth for a little time to experience something or do something specific here which is you know kind of blows me away like how often i see that um with people but there's another aspect too to this that i think so many people who want to connect to angels like we have this idea of what it's going to look like or what it's going to feel like whether that is an idea that we've picked up from um you know artwork like all of the beautiful artwork of angels that we have where they're like these beautiful you know angels and they're all very like um 
defined muscles and like these perfect bodies and these wings and, and all of this kind of stuff. Um, or, you know, even in more modern times too, we see a lot of artwork at the moment where and the angels are very light and they've got these big wings and they're like these light beings and people talk about them. Um, you know, I've heard people tell stories about how an angel came to them when they were, you know, in bed and they opened their eyes and it was this huge being of light that had come to pass on a message. And I think all of that stuff is great. I think that's amazing. But none of that's ever happened to me. <laughs> like I've never had, I've never had that, ex that experience. Um, and I wish that I had. And there was many, many times where, you know, I was waiting, I was calling on the angels. I'm like, angels come to me, like show me your, your true, your true self. Um, and, <laughs> and that's not I don't know about you is that how they come to you have you seen them like that <laughs> my thing my thing Vix is you know when people always say angels and stuff like this I'm like they're not always looking mm. like in the artwork mm -hmm. yeah it depends on your culture you know yes <laughs> so yes 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 you would when you see and you know I, I you know i have a wonderful mythology book it's so big it's like an encyclopedia and it has all the, many cultures like all the cultures you know different it goes by continent and with pictures and images a very old book and when i look at it and these are called angels i'm like oh my god i think it's so scary <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? and, and so that's when when i when people say that i'm like i wonder if the i don't want to say the culture because people may take it differently. But I wonder if this particular cultural angel showed up, you would be like smiling, <laughs> you know, you probably want to be like, shoot, <laughs> leave my mm -hmm, realm. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. So um, that's why I think it's important to talk about this. And I also wonder when you when I when I read these things, I was like, hold on a minute. Um, these attributes are attributes that we have so who are these angels is it it you know, that's why i liked your title you know you said the angels and the goddesses among us and i was like okay it's probably just we're probably you know looking at the angels who, you know they are you mm -hmm. they really are you because but i think um you know humanity i'll just say humanity for lack of better words because i know people define themselves differently but humanity has been trained to look outside it's mm -hmm. always someone mm -hmm. above and these are invisible like you know it's a light it's a this it's a that but the you know how you say it's it's sometimes the the truth and everything is just right in front of your eyes and you can't see it and 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 so i really like that you put, you know, you put a pin on this, like the angels and goddesses among us. And I think people should just look it because that when you are always looking outward, it, to me, it's kind of like also saying, I don't have to deal with this. I don't have mm -hmm. to be the kind one. Mm -hmm. I'll just call the angel mm -hmm. to help that hungry person, but you have a pantry full of food. Yeah. You, you know, yeah, and that's what I always was like. That's why I'm so aware of the angels who I see doing things just because they know that I can do it. I'm capable, you know, and it could be as simple as buying, a, you know, a hungry person food or, you know, um, you know, I don't know. You have a friend who is in between moving and stuff and you're like, yeah, just you have spare rooms. You're the angel, mm -hmm. right? You are the, mm -hmm. the person mm -hmm. praying for a room you got five yeah. rooms so this is what i i noticed with humanity it's more like they spend too much time looking outward and to the winged haloed guys <laughs> and women and goddesses but actually they are the epitome they it's you you know you know angels are protectors you protect your children every day Women have lifted cars. Mm. You know, we've seen, mm. Mm -hmm. women yeah, have lifted amazing. Cars to save their children. They've, you know, they've fought, you know, lions. <laughs> you know, yes. you know when I when I look at all this stuff, I'm like, it's you. 
you know, mm. and, and, and so that's why, you know, we are here to talk about this because I think it's important sometimes, yes, it's okay to, cause we, you know, there are more realms on the physical realm that's unknown, but what about this realm, <laughs> you know? What about you start seeing yourself as the angel? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and fine, there are people who've seen stuff, you know, angels, I'm like you, Vex, you know, <laughs> no. But, <laughs> but I have never um, called them to say, come, you know, I, I never did that because I have this book, right? <laughs> and I, I <laughs> I didn't want to say that. I don't think I want, <laughs> I don't want you showing up in my space. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. And also, I found the angels, I, maybe you can talk about this. I find the angels to be a little bit notorious sometimes because people talk about the angels. Like you said, they said, oh my God, the angel just showed up. I almost collapsed. Now, that's an invasion of privacy. I don't mm -hmm. think that's that's how I saw it. Talk about it. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's such an interesting, um, yeah, that's such an interesting point. And, you know, I, I'm someone who I spend a lot of time calling on the angels and trying to get them to show up. <laughs> You know, I was, other people were having these experiences and like, oh, this angel just appeared. And I'm like, every, every night when I go to bed, I'm like, please come angels, please come and show me how amazing you are and, um, and all of that stuff. Um, but for me, like when the angels started showing up for me, it was less like they appeared in my house as these massive light beings. And it was more that, um, they were coming to me in meditation and it was definitely only with me asking them to come in. Like I would go into, into a meditation with an intention that I needed help with something or I needed guidance on something. And then I started to uh, like have these experiences. And, and one of my favorite ones was when I had this experience with Archangel Raphael and I was in meditation and I just kind of saw like in my, in my mind's eye, this man just kind of came and like sat down um, opposite me and he was just dressed in a t-shirt and, and jeans and I was like hey. <laughs> you know like who are you, <laughs> who are you? how are you gonna <laughs> he didn't have a white robe no no robe no robe no <laughs> like... this is so good <laughs> I mean his energy was nice though you know like he was you, you know like when you like the same as when you when you go out somewhere and someone might come come and approach you and there'll be people that will approach you and you'll be like I don't feel good about this and other people will come over and you'll be like oh okay this person's got a good vibe so he had a nice vibe and he sat down and um you know I said I sort of said like you know who, who are you and he said I'm Archangel Raphael and I was looking at him like, <laughs> how can you be Archangel Raphael? Like you're just a, just like a, a young man in jeans and a t-shirt. And he, um, and he said to me, he's like, the angels don't really have form. We just appear to you in the way that you were best going to be able to understand us and connect with us. Ooh. And I was like, well, of course that, you know, that totally makes sense. Um, and so he sat with me like in this meditation and he just kind of like put his hands out and just sent me some healing. And I was like, okay, that was really nice. And it wasn't, it wasn't scary. It wasn't like a massive light being appearing <laughs> in, a, in a moment where you're like, I don't know that I really want to see this. Um, it was just this really beautiful, gentle meditation. And then of course you could ask, you know, well, was that really him? Did he really appear in my meditation or was that my mind making something up so that I could receive the healing that I needed? You know, we can go into that whole rabbit hole of like, do angels really even exist or do we just kind of create them with our own energy because we need something, um, so yeah, but I, lo I love what you said. Like I, one of the things that I've, I've, I did at the beginning of my journey as well, and I see so many people do this is 
like asking the angels for something, but not doing anything yourself. Like that's such a, such a common thing. And I've done that in the past too, where I've just been like, oh, help me with this thing. <laughs> like, can you fix this situation for me? You know, can you like fix my whole life? Thanks. Um, and, you know, I found, found out pretty quickly that it doesn't work like that. Like the angels will help you, but they're not here to like do our bidding and to be, you know, our servants or our, you know, they're not, they're not here to be our staff. Like they're here to support us and help us. Like they're our guides, you know, they're, they're like our mentors. We can sit down with them and say, what's my next step? What do I need to focus on? Give me the strength to do the things that I need to do in this life rather than, you know, like you said, giving your power away to something outside of you and saying, fix this situation for me rather than give me what I need so that I can do that in this life. Mm. Yeah. No, I think, I think, you know, also one thing that I find so um, fascinating is how you see how you just shared your experience <clears throat> and someone may think like all the things you said, the, <laughs> you can go down the rabbit to you really experience and, you know, all this stuff. I think also sometimes because of the education of the cult, you know, people are born in, you're born in a family, you become a Muslim, a Christian, a Buddhist. That's who you are. Mm -hmm. You're born in mm -hmm. a certain cultural tradition. You, that's what you know. But what I find interesting is people are not consciously aware that there are other cultures out there and other traditions <laughs> out there and <laughs> other things out there. So when she's sharing mm -hmm. the story, just because you haven't experienced it, you haven't been taught about it. All these things does not mean it's not valid, it's not real, it's not happening because, mm. you know, all this stuff, I, you know, and I see it all the time, like, oh, I don't believe in that. Why don't you believe in that? You, you know, you know, maybe it's, be, it's okay to say it's beyond my comprehension. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Say I don't know enough about it. It's okay to say it's not my culture. I haven't been exposed to it. It's okay to say all these things, but I find it's not okay to knock it off because you don't, you, it's not part of your culture, your upbringing, your education. You know what I mean? I find that too limited. Mm -hmm. You know, when I hear this story, I know, I, you know, it's valid. There the are other cultures out there, you know? And and you, you, you talk about the goddess. We'll talk about her now a little bit. Mm. because they have an overlap you know what i mean That's yes like my mythology book talks about yeah. God. <laughs> i love the sound of this book what's the what's the book called i'll sh I'll, I'll show it to you I have, yeah okay it. it's it's no actually it's called the encyclopedia <laughs> of myths and symbols mm. Yes, okay. it's an encyclopedia. It sounds good. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll email you the book, if, the cover and everything. Great. Yeah. And in, in this book, you know, it depicts all kinds of things. And so when I when I look at it, I'm just like, okay, th these are other cultures, you know. And, and also, it also shows you the things that now you go, when people worshiping certain things, you're like, you know, the, you know, the offerings were... You know, the, yeah. the Aztecs yeah. and the Mayans, they were not doing cool stuff. Mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, I'd like us to talk a little bit now about the goddesses. Mm. And, um, and I know that it's 2024 and people still think this is, <laughs> this is an interesting, strange topic <laughs> because everything has been about the God right yes um and i find this to be fascinating because we're all made in the image and likeness of god right so surely the woman should have something out there that's made in her image and likeness right walk us through this um the goddesses among us and how can someone recognize the you know if there are a goddess or uh, or an angel as well i know I'm, I'm going back to that but maybe you can combine them too you know yeah uh so yeah the goddess is such a i mean how much time do you 
much time do we have to talk about the goddess? Because there's so you know we could go we could go so so far with that. Um, but like we, like I sort of talked about at the beginning about how you know angels are like this aspect of of the divine. Um, the goddesses are really like aspects of the divine feminine, like the feminine aspect of of God, of source, of of the divine. And there's so much like people are talking so much about this at the moment, which is fantastic because we should all be talking about it. But it's, I find it really interesting how some people are kind of like going so far down the goddess path that now we, I say we, some, some of us are kind of disowning the, the masculine energies that, that we have within us. And so everybody has like a masculine and feminine energy within them, no matter of your, of your gender, we all have these two opposing forces, like the masculine, the feminine, the positive, the negative, the, um, I like to kind of talk about it as like a push and a pull. And there's times to times in your life where you really need to push for something, you know, you need to hustle, you need to make something happen. And then there's times where you need to pull and let things come to you and just like relax and let the things, let the things come. Cause if we're always in the push, like the masculine push of like, got to make things happen, got to do things, you know, we end up in like a society, like what we have now where nobody is, everyone's lost their intuition. Nobody's taking breaks off social media. You know, everybody's just like constantly doing something constantly, you know, we, we can't just, sit and sit and rest for five minutes you know where and that's why we really need this divine feminine energy to give us this balance of like okay well sometimes we just need to pause sometimes we just need to be to let things come and to not always be in that like pushing hustling making things happen energy like we need to let the thing come to us. We do the work and then we let the thing come. Anyway, I could talk about, I could talk about that all day, but basically, you know, we're always kind of, I think again, you know, like you said, we've, we've really looked outside of ourselves for the gods and the goddesses, but now I think we're coming into this place where we're realizing that we need to kind of bring this harmony into ourselves and into our own lives where we have a deeper respect for the feminine energy whether you're you know you're male or female or you however you identify to respect that you know we all have this emotional like need to um to nurture ourselves to nurture others and of course we could go down the rabbit hole too of like what even are the the um you know the traits of the masculine and feminine because how many of those have just been kind of written down and given to us and said, oh, well, women are soft and men are strong, you know, like we could unpack all of that and be like, well, you know, what does that, e where does that even come from? Um, but ultimately, you know, whatever that means for you, like you're, um, and you can look at it as like the right side of the brain or the left side of the brain, you know, we could kind of look at it as that, like the creative and the logical, you know, we could, break it down into so many different ways. The, um, you know, in the yogic traditions, they talk about like the, the sun energy and the moon energy. So working with the goddesses is so needed at the moment because so many of us are so disconnected from that divine feminine. Like we're so disconnected from rest. <laughs> I keep saying rest and that's not, that's not to say the divine feminine is about sitting around doing nothing, but it's that, you know, we've rest, been. Rest is so important, you know. It like, is, it is. Please. Yeah. It's so important and, and people need to really recognize and you know, people, you're right. People throw shade on rest, you know, mm, and mm -hmm. people cannot rest. Have you ever observed someone rest and they're like, ah, okay, this is too much. I need to do something. Now. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, that is interesting. <laughs> me as well i'm like okay now this mm. is enough i need to but then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. actually a wise lady told me you know resting is just as good as anything and you need you know resting is not just about resting it's doing something to your body and your organs they're re everybody's resting 
your organs are resting, your glands are, mm -hmm. everything is resting mm -hmm. and regenerating. So I, I love that you said rest. Please go deeper into that. Go, go down the resting, yes, go down the resting path. Talking, but you were talking about <laughs> balancing and you, and you were talking mm -hmm. about something so important, Vix, the brain. You know, you talked mm. about the left and the right hemisphere. And, and I think what I took from there is we need to have a balanced brain. Mm -hmm. you know so i think it's so important we, we have to merge the two and get a balanced brain but but go go further into this this is really a t well maybe it's just faith <laughs> but i think it's very 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 fascinating what you're saying someone needs yeah someone needs that needs that message about rest <laughs> um but yeah it's it's interesting too because you know we're we're always sort of we talk about those the two sides of the brain like oh well i'm an intuitive or i'm a logical person or i'm a creative or i'm you know i'm not creative or i'm good at numbers or i'm not good at numbers and we put ourselves into those boxes and we say you know oh i'm very you know i'm very left left hemisphere i'm very right hemisphere i'm very this or i'm very that and we kind of just do it to ourselves and we're like okay I, and i do i've done that to myself many times and of course there is there's traits that we have that are probably more of one or the other, but that doesn't mean we don't have the capacity to use the other, the other side, you know, like I used to, um, I used to be somebody who would very much just go with the flow. Like I just went with the flow. I just let things happen. I just, you know, didn't really, like I had dreams, but I didn't do anything. <laughs> about them i kind of was it was in that place where i think a lot of a lot of people get to at certain points where the manifestation was just like well i just believe that it'll happen one day and it will and i'm not doing anything about it but you know if it's my destiny it will happen um and that was you know an interesting way to be and i think at that time in my life it probably served me well and that was probably exactly what i needed but as i kind of journeyed forward from there and i was like actually i really do want to you know live live a life where i'm doing the things that i really want to do i want to make some things happen i realized that i was going to need to activate a bit more of the masculine in in quotes <laughs> energy of like setting some goals and you know showing up and actually putting <laughs> some work in and you know do, doing all of those those sitting down at the computer and writing the book you know like actually doing doing the thing um and then you know i realized that you know we need we need both of these energies to really live the life that we want to live we can't just sit on the couch and wait for wait for things to happen although i know some people can manifest amazingly like that but i think it's very few people <laughs> it's very few people um, most people don't sit on the couch and then get the you know the lottery check for a million dollars i'm not saying it's never happened but i don't know anyone it's happened to uh, most people i know who are like you know living their dream life they're 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 living in this space between you know they they work hard and they show up but they also take time off and they rest and they look after their energy they look after their health they you know spend time with people they love like they have a they have this this balance and so yeah we i mean we're supposed to be talking about the goddess but i think you know the goddess is what we need right now to bring us back into balance rather than well it's either the god or the goddess you know pick a team <laughs> it's like no we're all playing on the same team <laughs> pick a team <laughs> i think that is so beautiful and and you know i love how you have explained this because i think this is you you've you've you know when people think of the word goddess and God, they go into the sky, <laughs> you mm, know, mm -hmm. sky stuff. And it's the, it's the unknown. Let them talk about that goddess stuff. We can't see it. We don't know it. It's stuff, you know, it's just, you know, I think, you know, you know, the movies also don't help. It's some women dancing around the fire. Yeah, yeah, songs. yeah. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I like how you've explained it. No, it's actually, it's, it's, the characteristics they are you know their attributes to this and it's an energy it's an action 
It's it's mm -hmm. how you show up in different aspects. So it's not just sky stuff. It's physical stuff. And I like that you have reminded people that we're still in the physical realm, right? <laughs> so we have to do physical stuff <laughs> and yeah. balance this. I think that was so cool when you said that. And, and um, you know, when people think of angels and goddesses, they always think of how powerful these beings are, right? Can you talk about their power with your discoveries and maybe you know Raphael shared some secrets with you can you talk about <laughs> you don't have to tell us everything of course <laughs> not just personally for you but share some of the you know the 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 you know just tell us what these guys I really wonder what these guys are up to like because the, the picture is so powerful <laughs> What are they do? Powerful and purposeful, and they fix things, and and everyone's calling on them. And then I look at the world, and I'm like, wow. are you are you the ones making a mess? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just I, I could be wrong, you know, you know. That's why I have amazing women on this show, you know, the sisterhood and men as well. But, you know, I have people who know who, who do deep dives into these topics because I'm looking at what people are saying and what the, 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 the you know, all the stuff. And then I'm looking at the manifestation in the physical realm and I'm thinking, so who's making a mess? Mm, who's making a mess? I think we're all making it. <laughs> <laughs> a mess. I think we're all making a mess. And I think so, like so many of us in have incarnated here, just going like totally off on like the woo-woo path for a minute. I think so many of us have <laughs> it's okay to do that. Uh yeah. so many of us have <laughs> we've incarnated here with this intention of like, I'm gonna go and help. You know, like I think so many people have that feeling whether you whether they resonate as like a light worker or a healer or someone with a big mission to do something positive for the world. Like most, I think most people who are probably listening to this have that feeling in, in some way, you know, I'm here to help. And we come here and we're like, we're going to help. We're going to save the world. We're going to fix the world. And then we get here and we're like, <laughs> where do we even start? <laughs> you know, like, where do we even start? And then I think we can get so focused on, looking at everything that's that's wrong and you know oh that person's doing this and that person's making this choice and that person's could be better and you know like all the judgment and the, all of that kind of stuff uh and you know we, we've all done that and then i think we realize that actually the biggest impact we can have is when we work on ourselves and we look at the things within ourselves that can be better and can be changed and can be, um, you know, just how can we be the best person that we can be every day? And when we're in that energy of like, okay, I'm going to be the best person I can be every day, then we go out into the world and we, we notice, you know, like we notice when someone's on the street and they need money, we put money in instead of just walking past, you know, like these, these little things. And I think, there's this sort of expectation for for light workers and and healers and spiritual people that we're somehow going to be like the next Jesus and like, <laughs> have the answers for everyone. Like we'll we'll get on social media and tell everyone like just be good, be better people, and the whole world will the whole world will change, uh, which is a nice a nice idea. Um, and there's a, quite a few people on instagram who who are saying they're jesus which is really interesting that's a whole that's a, you can go down that that rabbit hole if you're interested um well i hope they're radicals and i hope they they know that you know jesus was not cool right he was he was doing a lot of the stuff that was unpopular yes you know, yeah he was a radical, mm. not actually he was not all like love and light oh yeah yeah <laughs> that's what yeah yeah he was yeah. Love, he was love but he was many things like if you look at jesus what we have in the bible and now if you're jesus then you need to, we need to be seeing you in television <laughs> mm. <laughs> like really yeah yeah <laughs> like definitely definitely <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> have you seen um ai jesus no I haven't. there's an ai jesus and i you know i i i went down that rabbit hole <laughs> um <laughs> Because I, I have so many, uh, so many feelings about AI, um, yeah. but I found this this AI Jesus, and it was amazing. Like what people were asking all these questions, oh. and the, the the it's like a video of this guy, and he just kind of just keeps bringing everything back to love and being good, and it was just it was amazing. Um, but you know that's it's interesting that we've come to talk about Jesus because I think he is like such a fantastic person to look to, like not to look to the church or to look to the church's teachings or, you know, all these things that have kind of come out of that. But if you just go back to looking at who he was as a person, he was all, he was love. He was compassionate. He was um, non-judgmental. He took in everybody. He was so inclusive, but he also didn't let people get away with stuff. You know, like when he saw something happening in the world that was not right, like he spoke up about that. And I yeah. think if we all tried to get into that energy a little bit more and we were like, yes, it's, it comes from love and compassion and we're not calling this stuff out because, you know, like cancel culture and someone said something I didn't agree with and all that kind of stuff, but like genuinely seeing things that are harmful and, um, you know, creating problems in the world and, and talking about that as well as being love and compassion and all of that. Like I think, you know, he's such a great figure to kind of look to for how do we get out of this mess? <laughs> like we need more people who are in, in love and compassion, but also willing to talk about the, the hard things. And I think so many people, you know, we kind of go one way or the other. We go so far down the love and compassion path. And, you know, he's a great example of someone who's really like blended these two energies because we can go so far down love and compassion that we just say well everything's as it's meant to be and everything's good and everything's fine that's you know like that's that's huge in spiritual community right like so many people are like well it's just everything happens for a reason <laughs> oh the war and this and all these terrible things or we can go so far down the other path where we just you know, we lose that we lose the compassion and we get so focused on this is wrong. This is bad. This needs to change. Everyone needs to do it my way because I'm right. And, you know, <laughs> that whole thing. And it's like, it's hard to find, to find that middle, that middle point. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, how do we, how do we get out of this mess? I think that, you know, coming back to the angels and the goddesses, when we ask them for help, I think what what we're really doing, or at least what I feel like I'm really doing when I ask them for help, I'm kind of calling on them and I'm saying, um, you know, show me what to do. Like show me how um and one of my one of my prayers that I say every every day is like, please show me how I can be of service to love today. Like show me how I can do that. And in those in those moments where I have a choice. A, a, a loving choice or not a so loving choice be with me and help me to make the most loving choice I can mm. so yeah for me the angels are like the you know when you you know the cartoons with the little angel and little devil on your shoulder <laughs> and it's like who are you gonna listen who are you gonna listen to so when you call on the angels it's like saying I'm gonna listen to you I want to listen to you I want to do the right thing. I want to be the best version of myself I can. I want to help the world in whatever way I can today. Can you help me? Can you be the voice on my shoulder that tells me, Vix, go this way? <laughs> you know, Vix, here's someone that needs help. What are you going to do? Yeah, I think that is so, so beautiful how you've put that because, you know, you've given so many examples that are applicable. It's, you know, I like when someone shares stuff that if you're listening, you can just do it. It, it You don't need to say, oh, I don't have enough money or, you know, mm -hmm. my culture doesn't allow it or, you know, I have restrictions. I like when people just tell you, you know, this is something, open your mouth and you can do it. You can, uh, you, you know, 
or you know whatever culture you're in everyone has these angels or or you know belief systems some don't some are ancestral whatever it is there's help right so you know you can do it and mm. i like that you said we go down you know either this or that you know it's it's the two extremes and i think vixen you can correct me if i'm wrong i think that has a lot to do with the inability of people to come down and just admit that maybe what I learned was wrong, incorrect, and there's a different way of doing things that will require you to do some unlearning. Also, the ability to say that maybe, you know, what she's doing, you know, could be interesting and let me look at it and then. You still have the choice to say it's not my thing but when you are stuck you judge things that you know nothing about you have not you've not done the you know you've not read about it you've not you don't have the information to be judgmental and that means you know i like to say cross the street just cross the street you know like cross the street it's not that hard just cross the street then you can decide you know vix is not my cup of coffee or the angel part, Vic said, is my cup of coffee, but the goddess part, mm, you know. But then you will have learned something about Vic's. So the next time Vic says something, you wouldn't say it's this or that because you know something in that is not 100%. And I think not enough people are crossing the street. And so mm. everyone is, you know, this one wants to fix, is building a homeless shelter, and this one is saying they're too lazy, let them get a job. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the homeless shelter which you want to build is becoming more complicated than it should be. When all you can say is, you know, maybe it's her culture. Because in Hindu, uh, they have one of their pilgrimages is a charity. This is part of their religion to do this. You know, I think they have five pilgrimages. So if you understood that, you'd be like, it has nothing to do with whether they're lazy or not. They're going to do it. It's part of their religion. <laughs> it's a requirement. <laughs> Whether I believe in it or not, you know what I mean? And I think, I think, I don't know. I just think that we just need to, I, we just need to just chill out a little bit, you know, and admit mm. we all have missing pieces, you know, and Vix has a piece and, you know, Vix's neighbor has a piece and my neighbor has a piece, you know what I mean? Mm, I love that so much. And I think, you know, my, like my journey has been very much about trying to find all the pieces. <laughs> trying to going through all these different um you know like when I was a teenager I was really into wicker and witchcraft like really full on into that and then I joined the church and I became a born again Christian mm -hmm. for a couple of years and I thought that was my you know thought that was my path and then I left the church and then I went on to do something else and I've I've been looking for the pieces and i feel like you know i've got to got to this point now where i still don't have a lot of people still don't have all the definitely don't have no one's ever gonna have all the pieces but i feel like in looking outside of you know what you were how you were brought up or um just what you know what the people around you say like even the people you know that you have around you in your life now like looking outside of that and getting curious about um you know different cultures and different paths can lead you to finding more of those pieces for for yourself and i've always you know i've always said to anybody who who works with me who takes a workshop or gets a reading with me i always say you know enjoy this use this but keep your own intuition activated and if i say something that you're like what are you talking about like angels appearing as you know in jeans and a t-shirt like that's just <laughs> that's just weird and i would never want to do that then that's totally fine. You know, then that's not how you're going to connect with them. That was just what worked for me in that, on that special day. That was beautiful for me. Maybe for you, they are appearing at the, the end of your bed. Maybe they're coming without permission, but that's what you like. <laughs> Maybe that's, you know, that's how it needs to be. For <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's just. I don't know. Maybe you had a soul contract to have that, ex have that experience. I don't know. I don't know. Um, 
<laughs> and I do think, you know, the further further down this this path you get, the more you realize that you don't know anything as well which is really a fun place to get to you know where it's like i the amount that i know is like you know nothing really (laughs) compared to what's what's out there so yeah but i yeah i always i always say that to people like just you know listen to these conversations take something that resonates leave the rest if you listen to this and you're like yeah vix wasn't my cup of coffee then that's okay. Find go find your cup of coffee. You know, keep listening. Listen to the next podcast. Maybe that'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Vix? When 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 you are are uh, when you get it, like you're saying, we 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 get this knowledge here and that knowledge here. It reaches a point where that you you find very few people who are not your cup of coffee, because you know that there is a gem yes. in everything. Yes. Mm-hmm. I have, I rarely yeah. find people who are not my cup of coffee. Even though I don't agree with everything, I always find yeah. something. I'm like, hmm, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, you know, sometimes you can you can you can talk to somebody or you know, list even when you watch a movie, you can watch a whole movie and then you only five minutes of it is 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 get, you know, like that line was really something. <laughs> but the movie was really crappy, you know. So I, I think I never, I haven't, well, it's been a while since I said this person is, or this information or whatever is not a cup, you know, whatever, even an event, there's always something, you know, there's always mm, a, mm-hmm. um, you know, something you get from it. So I find it fascinating when people say that, oh, she's on my cup of coffee. I don't, I'm like, oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> there's always something. I don't care. Mm, even mm. Those, yeah. Um, that's my, my, my take on that. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that because I like I'm I feel the same, you know, like I'm constantly um, engaging with different teachings and different practices from all sorts of different paths. And it's very rare that I will watch something and say, you know, that was a complete waste of time. <laughs> There's always something, and you can learn something from everybody. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, even the children's shows. You know, oh, I learned a yes. lot. Oh, yes. Oh yes. was Avatar with one of my nephews. He 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 put me onto that. He was like, you know, Auntie Faith, come, let me show you some Avatar. It's my favorite. And these guys, these kids, this anime was talking about the power of water and fire. Mm. <laughs> it was fascinating i was glued to it yeah that was my seven-year-old nephew so again Mm. i I love that there's always gems in that one thing i wanted us to touch on before we head out is the representation of angels and goddesses you touch a little bit on it but we didn't go deeper into it because i think it has a huge impact on what people perceive this to be that's why they judge your raphael in jeans (laughs) because (laughs) Someone painted this. And they don't know somebody's artwork. You see, maybe fifty years from now, um, Vix, your Raphael will be the new artwork that people will. Be yeah, doing. you know, everyone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine? This is like the the artwork that everybody's. You know, like the pictures of Jesus that you see. That's just like that picture of Jesus that's everywhere, and it's like, oh well, that's definitely what he looked like. And we're like, no, no actually, he never would have been had blue eyes or had pale skin like that just would not that doesn't make any sense but everyone's just anyway um that's going back down the jesus the jesus path um yeah it's been it's been really interesting because we created these decks the angels among us and the goddesses among us oracle decks that i created with ellie grant this amazing artist and what we did was we dressed all of the angels and the goddesses just in modern day clothing Mm-hmm. And there was quite a few reasons for that. Um, one of the reasons was because that was how they were appearing to me. So that was made sense to, <laughs> to be like, hey, this is, you know, how they, how they look to me. Um, it was also because I really wanted people to be able to connect with the the energies of the gods, the goddesses and the, and the angels. And there's ascended masters and other, other beings in there as well in a way that wasn't so disconnected, like in a way where you could look at them and say, Oh, you know, that looks like the guy 
down at my gym or that looks like the the woman that makes my coffee or that looks like my mom you know like there's people in there that you will hopefully recognize and it was difficult with you know diversity we only have 36 cards but we tried really hard to be like you know someone in here will maybe look a little bit like someone that you know mm. and then the other the other reason for that was that i wanted people to see themselves in the in the cards and in the images mm. so you know we we wanted that to be a part of the a part of the experience where you might go through the deck and you might say oh, okay, she looks a little bit like me. Maybe not exactly, but, you know, I can see myself in that image. And if you can see yourself in an image of an angel, you know, like that's a cool thing, right? And it helps you to see that, you know, maybe you're a little bit angelic too, and maybe you have some of those traits and maybe, you know, the angels aren't just something outside of you. Maybe they are, are you, like we talked about. Um, earlier so that's kind of where we got to with with that and and I find it really interesting I have definitely had some negative responses <laughs> to, the, to the to the decks um you know I've had people oh message me and say, <laughs> and say and some like Amazon reviews and things from people that have said you know that's not what they look like really that's not that's really? not what they look like and i find that really fascinating because it's like well you know they don't really look like anything <laughs> they're just energy um so you know and then people are like oh well where's their robe and where's the the armor and where's the you know all of these things and it's like but but that that imagery that we see you know like the <laughs> The, um, you know, like the Raphael and the Michael from, you know, like 500 years ago, like all of that was just created from artists who were making them look like people, modern day people, because that was the modern day then, and sticking wings on their back. So we just did the same thing, but we just updated it. But it's really, it's really interesting how, you know, we're so, or some people are so stuck in this idea of, well, you know, I've seen this this artwork of Archangel Michael from like the 1800s or, or earlier, 1600s or whenever, and so that's what he looks like. But angels have been around since the beginning of time. Like if angels are just aspects of source, they've been around since the Big Bang, <laughs> you know? So like why do they have to look like the artwork from the, you know, the 1500s? Like, it's just one way that we, that we've seen them. And then there's like this whole thing too, that I, that I read somewhere around how actually angels are just light beings and they never had wings, but the, the images, like the artwork, people were seeing these light beings and they thought they were seeing wings because of the glow, like the light around them. So they started painting wings. So there's this whole thing about like, they might not even have wings anyway, <laughs> you know, like, and then like you said, if you look into the, like the old Testament, the descriptions of the angels in there are truly terrifying. And I have seen oh, yeah. some, yeah, like I've seen some people have done like artwork on, like they've taken the descriptions from the old Testament really? and have done the artwork with like um what was that one of the angels has like um looks like a wheel with like 82 eyes on it or something and people have drawn that and it's like you don't want that showing up at the bottom of your bed <laughs> like that's really <laughs> not what you want to say but you know even that it's just somebody's interpretation of this exactly. of this energy um so yeah it's been a really interesting interesting experience to kind of create that and say hey why can't angels wear just modern day clothes and be be walking around i think they're walking around all the time you know when when we and, and you do hear the, hear these stories you know oh someone um i i broke down at the side of the road and somebody came and they fixed my tire and then when i turned around they were gone <laughs> You know, like these amazing little stories. And it's like, that was an angel. That was definitely an angel. You know, some bloke in a, in jeans and a t-shirt came and fixed your car. And then he just like, poof, disappeared. Yeah. 
happens all the time or somebody does something so incredibly amazing for you and when you come back to thank them this mm. happened to me once or so someone at the airport she was just amazingly amazing and i was you know i was flying right but i was coming back so when i came back i brought her a gift to say thank you and i told she doesn't work there they don't know that person I was like, no way. This person checked me in. They did this, they did that. And they were like, um, no. And they went above and beyond. It was just so, everything was just so shocking. And I was just like, no. And I said, but I brought, because I thought maybe they were, you know, of course they do protect the employees. You can't just allow, you know, and I said, no, I brought her a thank you gift because she did this. And I said, look at my check-in. All this was done. It was not, it, it was obvious. This was somebody who did something really kind and amazing and they were like we don't know it was just your lucky day so um we don't have this person working here it was two days i was gone for two days came back and i went straight to the counter and i asked for her and i was told nope she doesn't work there <laughs> and it happened. wow it does wow happen. yes yes it happened that's I, amazing I mean, yeah that's why i think Again, like you said, we are the they are the angels, right? I'm like, is she quit? Is she resigned? Is she moved? They said no, no. Mm. This person yeah. is like, what? Oh, that's amazing. If I was an angel, I would do stuff like that all day. <laughs> <laughs> I just be <feel> like, <laughs> need some help? I can help you with this, and then I just disappear. <laughs> <Comment>. <laughs> I think, I think God would, uh, would would end up putting you in a band because people wouldn't be learning. <laughs> like, <laughs> interfering too much with the mortals. I think I would be like, I'd be like you. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, and and I like that. Um, we need to that you you know you talk about us looking a little bit, you know, looking at the artwork and the literature with an open mind, and because again, mm, Vicks, we mm. keep saying we don't know everything, and. This was the artwork of another human being. This was someone's imagination. Mm. So the way we stick with it, like it's the law, is so fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it really is. And I think, you know, I probably did that too at some point. But, yeah, I just, I find it, I find it really interesting how, um, yeah, we just pick one thing and it's like, well, that must be what they, what they look like because we're so programmed I guess like that's the imagery that we've seen like you know over and over again and so we just take that on as being truth but I think I think the only way to really understand the angels is to is to work with them and call them in and to have a relationship with them like you'd have a relationship with you know another another person and spend time with them and see what they have to have to share with you and see how they can they can help you. I think that's, you know, that's the, that's the, the best way that you can find out, you know, what they really, what they really look like or what they, what they're going to look like to you and how they're going to help you. Yeah. And for somebody who's watching this and has their set mind and way of doing things or is just listening to this information for the first time, because I'm sure there's one person who's listening to this for the first time, at least one person, what would you, tell them or what would you recommend for them as i don't want to say ritual because people people think these words are all negative a ritual you wash your hands every day brush your teeth that's a ritual you mm. know but, but you know but what kind of ritual for lack of better words or practices um associated with connecting to angels or goddesses what, what are some of these things that they can do if, if they don't know what to do or they're starting off yeah, I think, um, you know, for me, the first thing that I did when I started to connect with angels was the first thing was that I just had an intention that I wanted to do it. And I think just kind of expressing that intention in some way and just saying, hey, angels, <laughs> like I'm, you know, I'm curious. I want to connect with you. I want to get to know you. I want to... Um, you know, I want us to, I want us to connect can be a really great place to start. And so can just talking to them. Like that was, you know, that was one of the things that worked so well for me. I think we can get really caught up in where well, you've got to light a candle and you've got to say this and you've got to have this, the right angel-like crystal and you, 
<laughs> all of those things, which can help, you know, if you if you are somebody that likes doing it in that way, then you can, you know, you can sit down and you can light a candle and say, I'm calling in the angels to come and like work with me and I invite you into my life and please help me in positive ways or whatever you, you'd like to say. Um, but you know, I think for me, I was, when I started working with angels, I was just in a place in my life where I just really needed help. <laughs> you know, I just needed some guidance and I just needed, um, you know, I was, at, I was at a place where, you know, I was just really feeling like there's got to be more to life than this. And, you know, I was just kind of in a, in a cycle of just, you know, not really going anywhere, not really doing anything, just kind of living, letting life happen to, to me, you know? And I just sort of thought, I don't want to live like this. Like I want to have a more exciting, magical life than this. And so I just started talking to them and asking them for help. And I just said, you know, can, can you help me? <laughs> can you help me? And then you know, I started to do things like when I was driving to work in the car, I would just kind of, you know, turn off the radio and I'd just have a chat. And people must have thought, like, who's she talking to? Is she on the phone? Is she, you know, like, is she, yeah, is she talking to someone in the back seat? Um, but I would just have these conversations and I would just talk to, you know, myself or the, the angels and I'd just say, look, I'm feeling really stuck right now. I could really use some help with this. I really, you know, could you give me some guidance around this? And the first, like, a hundred times I did that, I got nothing. You know, like I got nothing. I, I felt good expressing it and saying it, but I didn't get like an angel appeared to me next to me telling me the telling me the answer. But then, you know, eventually the answers started to come and I would find that when I would sit down and say, I really need some guidance. And just this just happened the the other day. Um, I was pulling some cards for myself and I you know, visualize myself kind of going into a temple and there was an angel there. And so I started having this conversation with the angel and I was just saying, this is how I'm feeling. I'm confused about this. And the angel was asking me questions about it and kind of, you know, making me really think about things. And it wasn't like the angel gave me this you know, here's the answer to, to everything that's kind of going on for you. But it was this conversation. It was like this really powerful kind of spiritual therapy session <laughs> where I kind of came out of that meditation and I felt calmer and I felt like I knew what to do and I felt like I had my next steps and I was, that was a really good experience. And so I would just say, you know, talk to them. And if you're worried about people looking at you in the car, you know, talk to them in the shower, talk to them when you got two minutes on your own. And, and this, you know, this goes for, angels, goddesses, guides, you can just ask your guides. If you're like, I don't want to work with the angels, I'm not into that. You can just do the same thing and just talk to your guides and just say, I need some help with this, 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 and this. And then, you know, see where it, see where it takes you. Yeah. You work with a lot of uh, different people and they share their experiences with you. Have you ever had somebody's share an experience with you about do you know calling an angel and the wrong kind shows up or or you know a more malevolent um entity because you know when you said just call on them i was like wow that's so general like <laughs> did you want to be <laughs> I'm glad that you. <laughs> yeah. ah, really? And well, you know, it's and... like if you just say angels, because a lot of things are called angels. They 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 mm. they, they go by this mm -hmm. uh, title, and uh, there and also in this book, it's an encyclopedia of myths and something symbols, and it talks about their attributes, but they all fall under these titles of angel, of deity, of this by different names. So. You can call on this one, and it's the it is considered the bringer of death. And death doesn't mm -hmm. mean killing. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can kill your. You maybe you want to get rid of a relationship. You want to. It will just say, "Oh, help! Okay, I'm I'm this title, and I, she's having trouble in her relationship. I will just get rid of it. That's that one's job." Mm. This is a great. This is a great question, and there's a couple of things. Um, that you can do. So generally, if you're calling on angels, mm -hmm. it's a title. Mm -hmm. Angels, 
as far as I'm aware, unless you're calling on like a fallen fallen angel, because just fallen angels, and some people call on them for for help as well. You know, some people but call for fallen, fallen Lucifer. Fallen for angel, it falls under angel. They may not. They may be innocent. You know what I mean, Vex? It could be an yeah. innocent person, and they just say, "I'm calling on an angel." And a lot well, I would say, mm. yeah, yeah. So, um, so I haven't had that experience with angels. Like when I've specifically said angels, I don't feel like I've gotten anything that is not from the light, but I have had experiences where other things have come in, like guides, you know, gu not guides, but, you know, like beings have come in who haven't felt like they're, they're from the light. Um, but there's a few things you can do. So you can always just ask, be like, be specific when you're asking, say angels from the highest realms of love and light, or, you know, from the highest realms of love, light and truth, or, you know, whatever you, whatever you want. Um, and make sure that, you know, you're calling on, yeah, I feel like angels from the light. But the other thing you can do is you can call on archangels because the archangels are higher than just a general, you know, just general, give me any angel <laughs> for this. You can call on the archangels. And when you start looking at like the specific archangels, you you can find that, you know, and this is, this is part of why it's great to, you know, learn a little bit about some of the archangels because you'll find the ones that you feel like, that's a yes. I want to work with that energy. I don't want to work with the the angel of death right now. You know, that's not <laughs> that's not what I what I'm ready for. What I want. Um, but and I death always doesn't mean life death, people. It just means yeah. You know, you don't want something anymore. So mm -hmm. you know, again, that word yeah. it's misused and abused, but it means different things. Just like yeah. you said, witchcraft and witch. It's not what it means. Even mm, pagan, yeah. all these words, they don't mean what you, the, you know they're said to be. Sorry, what we think I'm they mean. Things. I'm not dead. Yeah. What are they talking about? Just yeah, and so, like people still get you know. I mean, I've been reading the tarot for like 20 years and even sometimes when I pull the death card, I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah. okay. Like I know what it means, but it's still that <laughs> moment of like, oh no. Okay. Um, but I, I always say to people, like, if you want to start working with angels, one of the, the best angels to work with is Archangel Michael. Mm. So Archangel Michael, like if you look into his lore and you look into his background and you read stories about him, what he's done, the people that have worked with him, um, I don't know anyone that's had an experience with Archangel Michael that hasn't just felt like very powerful and safe and from the light. That doesn't mean he'll be the right angel for everybody, but he's a fantastic protector. So you can call him in and ask him to protect you. Like that can be one of the first things that you do. You can say, Archangel Michael, can you please protect me so that when I work with angels, I'm always safe or, you know, something, something like that. He was one of the first angels I worked with and he helped me to really work with my energy protection and to learn how to protect my energy so that first of all, like the, you know, negative entities or whatever wouldn't, be able to come into my space but if they did i would be able to you know i'd know i'd know what they were because the more we protect our energy the more we can discern like what's what's positive and not positive so i would say you know if you're somebody who's never worked with angels before but you're a little bit like who, who even are they? <laughs> like, do some, do some research and say, okay, maybe I just want to stick to the archangels, but the archangels are, um, you know, very specific energies that have been worked with for like thousands of years that we can tap into, um, into their energy. If you look at Archangel Michael, he's all about protection and, um, you know, he's, he'll clear stuff away. He will, you know, and if you feel like you've, you've, called something in or you connected with something that isn't from the light, you can just really quickly call an Archangel Michael to remove it and he'll come and get it <laughs> taken away. Yeah. So yeah, there's a few, that's a few little tips. I mean, that's, you know, that's something we could talk about all day as well, <laughs> but that's kind of just to, you know, to get people started. Um, but also, you know, ultimately if you feel like you don't want to do it, then, you know, listen to that. Yes, absolutely. Don't, 
don't call in, you know, like you said, different cultures have different, um, have different beings that they, that they work with. So if you want to call in your ancestors, because that feels safe for you, then take everything that we've, you know, we've said about how to connect with them, sit in the car and talk to your ancestors, mm. you know, do, do that or, or talk to Buddha or Kuan Yin or whoever, you know, whoever kind of feels safe for you. It doesn't have to be the angels. Or no, or no, talk to yourself, <laughs> talk to your higher, your higher self. Like that's a, that's another fantastic way to do it. And who's to say that the angels aren't just, you know, versions of our, of our higher self. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah. I love that. And, and, you know, in some cultures, everyone had a role. There were just those who were supposed to be spiritual and everyone else yes. did something else. It's yeah. okay people to just do what feels good, but, as long mm. as you're doing something. <laughs> 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 well, that's all I say, as long as you're doing something. And you know that you're a powerful being, right? And you you have the mm. power to create things. You know, also, you know, Vix, we hear this a lot. People say, you know, what can I do? You can do so much. You know, like, you know, like Vic said, you know, you should just did this thing and that's the drop in the ocean. And if we're all putting a drop, we make, we make the ocean. So you can do something, right? Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, Vix, for coming today. I absolutely enjoyed this. I think everyone watching will enjoy this as well. And uh, before we head out, I'd just like you to share anything that we might have missed out that you'd like to talk about today. And then um, tell us where we can reach you and, you know, get your products. I know you've written some books. And, um, yeah, tell us all about that. And also talk about anything that, you know, I might have left out or we might have left out. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything that we've that we've left out. I feel like we covered so much <laughs> in like an hour. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, I feel like we we really um, yeah we talked about a lot. Um, so yeah, so people can find me. Um, oh gosh, I always struggle with this question. Um, so my website is newagehipster.co, and over there you'll find all of my offerings. I do so many different things. So I have a bunch of books uh, that I've written. I have three books, and I have three oracle decks that are out. Actually, sorry, I have six books, three, three are nonfiction, mystical books, and three are fiction, young adult fiction, but that's, you know, conversation for another time, um, <laughs> mystical fiction. Uh, oh, and I love I love yeah, it. that's cool. yeah, it's very witchy and magical. Um, and oh, I also, um, I do soul readings for people. So I work one-on-one with people where we kind of, you know, they're, they're like a tarot reading or a, or a card reading, but we kind of, um, the way that I work with people is I look into your energy and I look at your, uh, you know, your, your soul and like who you are, not just here now, but who you are on like a higher, higher level. That's, you know, talk about, talk about, talked about that really briefly at the start, uh, you know, how I have some clients who come and it's like, oh, you're an ascended master or you're an angel, um, which is fun. Um, but, you know, it doesn't matter if you're not, right? Like there's no no hierarchy. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I do those. And I also teach spiritual development and I teach Kundalini yoga as well. So, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Like if you head over to my website, you'll find loads of loads of things and I also um have on my website like a blog where I have a whole bunch of tarot spreads and I make magical memes and I do like just a whole bunch of <laughs> a whole bunch of weird and wonderful things <laughs> over there that you'll find <laughs> <laughs> it sounds fun actually <laughs> it is fun it is yeah, fun. It fun yeah yeah, and um, I'd like to remind all our listeners that all of Victoria's information will be in the description. So you'll be able to find everything you need there and, of course, links to her social media and her websites and all that good stuff. So remember to take a peek in the description section of this um, interview and then um, see what piques your interest and then just go for it. Like, you know, you know, Victoria, Vic, sometimes... Um, I find that we can think things to death. You know, have you ever mm. noticed that? 
you can think yeah. something to death like you you see something it resonates and then you start think killing the whole vibe and the idea <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah i know exactly <laughs> what i mean <laughs> you go with your first mind and your intuition they usually work out the best you know so i don't know yeah. why we, we we know that i don't know why we still you know sometimes think mm. so see mm -hmm. what makes your interest and then just go for it you know okay so this was today's smart sister victoria vix maxwell thank you for coming over victoria we love oh thank you, you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. This was wonderful. I loved connecting with you and the conversation and you're amazing. And it was just so nice to, to be in this space and be invited here. So thank you. Thank you so much for coming. We absolutely enjoyed you. It was so much fun. And, 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 you know, I think there were so many gems and I don't want to share my gems what I took, because sometimes I do that. I just need to let people take what they take <laughs> from it. <laughs> and go with the flow so thank you everybody thank you for stopping by as always we love and appreciate you all and until next time goodbye